Hey there, welcome to the artist greenhouse. My name is Steph and today we're going to be painting this colorful flower design in our sketchbooks. So I'm going to be using a palette of pre-mixed gouache colors. This is artist gouache. So these colors can be reactivated with water. This does not work with acrylic gouache. If you're using acrylic gouache, you either need to mix as you're painting or you need to use a stay wet palette. This is just a cheap metal palette that I got on Amazon, I think for maybe $10. And I mixed these colors a few weeks ago when I wanted like a quick go-to palette for some, some autumn vibes with some pops of blue that I could use in my sketchbook practice because I find it really nice to just have some pre-mixed colors that I know are going to work really well together. So instead of, you know, having to go through all my tubes of paint or having to see all my colors together, I like to have a few different tins of, you know, different color palettes that were mixed from some of the same colors. So these mixes are, a lot of these are mixed from similar tubes. So I know that everything is going to work really well together and I don't have to do a lot of like swatching and wondering if my colors are going to work together. I can just grab a paint tin and start painting, which is what we're doing today. So I'm going to be using a number six filbert brush and I'm just going to start painting in a really simple flower design. So I'm just using the filbert brush to make individual petal shapes. And this is just going to be a really simple five petaled flower. So just your, your run of the mill, basic flower, not doing anything fancy here. I have been working on kids book stuff for the last few weeks. <laughs> so I always find that when I'm illustrating children's books, we're really working on any big project, it really takes a lot of creative energy. And when I come back to my daily sketchbook practice, I really want something super simple. So this is that today. Um, we're just going to be painting in just um, almost a repeat pattern, but of course it won't be a technical repeat. It's just going to be a design that covers the entire page here. And I'm sort of mixing in since we're in November, sort of mixing in some more autumnal colors. So like some oranges, some reds, uh, some yellows. I think a little bit of this, um, I've got a really nice sort of like mauve kind of pink mixed up here that I really like. So I think I might use it for the next little flower that I'm going to be painting in. Now, what I'm going to do first is just paint in the flower shapes themselves. And then I'm going to go back and draw in some stems and add some leaves. So since I don't really have a plan here, everything is just going to feel a little bit more organic. You know, if you've heard my videos before, I tend to be very uptight as an artist. So it's really important to me to find ways to loosen up in my sketchbook practice. So even when I paint these flower shapes, I'm doing my best to hold the brush a little more loosely than I would have in the past. I'm not holding as far down on the brush as I would have. And I am focusing on drawing or painting the petals with just a single little brush stroke and just really letting it feel organic and not so uptight and planned. So you'll see, you know, some of these flowers look a little wonky at this point. <laughs> this one that I'm painting right now, especially is a little, little weird, but I know that as I start adding in more detail, as I add in, you know, the flower centers and add in the stems and the leaves and this design kind of starts to like blend together, it's all going to feel a little bit better. So I'm kind of just letting it be wonky for now, just kind of trusting the process as always. There's, you know, anytime you're making any kind of art, I feel like there's always a point <laughs> where that point happens varies. But I feel like there's always a point where you feel like, uh-oh, <laughs> I've done something wrong. This isn't great. So I'm not necessarily feeling like I've done something wrong at this point. But, you know, I'm kind of just accepting that, like, you know, this isn't, like, you know, a high art situation <laughs> at this point. So the goal here in this first step is just to fill the double page spread of the sketchbook. So I'm keeping in mind that I need to have room for stems and leaves on these plants, 
but I'm just kind of staggering around my flower shapes. And then I'm also adding in just some little um, hints of shapes that are gonna be flower buds as well. Now, for me, this gouache mix has actually gotten a little bit wetter than I would normally like it for this kind of thing. So I'm gonna have to wait a minute um, once I get these flowers painted in. I'm obviously gonna have to wait a minute for it to dry. <laughs> before I can go on to the rest of it because otherwise I will smudge my hand through this paint and have to start over again. <laughs> so I either have to be patient and let my paint dry or I'll have to bust out the hair dryer and give it a little help. But I might just go make a cup of tea after I finish these flowers here and just let them dry. This is, you know, one of the things I don't really like about traditional watercolor is that I don't like waiting on paint to dry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not my jam. Um, it's one of the reasons that I'm more attracted to gouache in general, both this artist gouache and the acrylic gouache, because they do dry a little bit faster. And I just, you know, I just like painting with these. It's my preference. Um, ugh, I got a dot of water on, <laughs> on my sketchbook. That's okay. All right, so while those are drying, I'm gonna test out these blues and greens that I've mixed, because I haven't used this palette in a minute. And I just need to kind of get a sense of what is going to look good with the flowers that I've painted. So I've just really got a piece of scrap paper. I keep a pile of um, just these little pieces of scrap paper on the corner of my painting desk so that when I need to test a brush stroke or test a, test a color, I can do that. And, you know, I've just got paper sitting there waiting on this purpose. <laughs> so... My initial thought here was that I was probably gonna use one of these dark greens, but I'm kind of wondering about this dark blue. Um, that's probably a little dark. Um, I think that's um, a Holbein blue-black, maybe. Um, and I like this dark green, but I think maybe maybe I'm gonna make a mix from all my mixes. <laughs> I think, that's, I think that's probably what's gonna happen here. Um, so I think what I might do is maybe mix that first green and one of these blues to kind of make like a magical mess of like a nice uh, blue green color. And I've actually got a bunch of colors already on this tin. So I'm gonna smash all those together and we'll see what happens. And I actually think I am gonna go with this sort of um, blue green color that I've mixed next to this lighter blue at the top. So we're dry now, or at least we're dry enough <laughs> that I'm gonna, I'm gonna start painting in some of the stems. And I mixed up like a nice bit of this blue and this green to use here. And for this part, I'm also just switching to a round brush. I've got a couple sizes here. The larger one is a size two. Um, and then I think the smaller one is a size zero. And that's what I'm gonna be using here to start adding in the stems for the flowers. So let's just test on our little scrap paper here and see how that line looks. And then I've got the, you know, this nice mix of this greenish blue color. So I'm gonna start from the bottom and connect the line up to each flower. So we're just gonna give each little flower a nice little stem and then I'll give each of the little buds also little hints of stems. And I'm not trying to make these perfect. They don't necessarily have to connect to the flowers or to the buds. I'm just giving like little hints of stems. And we're really going to build this out a little bit as, you know, we continue on with this design and add in some more leaf details as well, which... For now, I'm not going to be adding in the leaf details because I want to use the bigger number two round brush to add in the leaves. And I'm just going to be using the small brush right now to add in the individual stems on the flowers. I can already feel myself starting to relax as I paint on these stems. And just, you know, just having this practice of being able to work on a really simple design like this just really helps me unwind because, you know, like I said, I've spent the last few weeks or so working on kids' book stuff. And when I work on kids' book illustration, it's just sort of like creatively all-encompassing. And even though I do keep up with my sketchbook practice while I'm working on these deep creative projects, 
I have to make sure that my sketchbook practice is simple enough that I get something from it, that I get that sense of relaxation from it, that I don't feel stressed out by it. So I'm not doing anything complicated in my sketchbook. <laughs> Although, let's be honest, I'm hardly ever doing anything complicated in my sketchbook because I am way more interested in just exploring color and texture and paint at this point. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't need to prove anything in my sketchbook. And that's a good feeling, right? Um, if you don't have that feeling yet, I hope you find it eventually because it's just, it's so peaceful to have a practice like this. I have drawn this type of flower design more than once in my sketchbook. I've done it in, you know, so many different colors. I've, you know, used to do a design like this when I was a little bit more uptight in my art making. <laughs> and now I'm using it as a way to explore some looser lines and looser brushwork. I'm just getting more comfortable with that more delightful organic feeling that I've been searching for in my art for a really long time. So even now it looks so imperfect and I just, I love it. And I'm so excited to see how this really comes together when I start adding in the leaves as well. And because I'm going for that more organic feeling in this piece, I'm really varying the brush stroke here. So the line weight is really varied from flower to flower and even from top to bottom so that it almost looks rough, but it really just looks like there is just, you know, some spontaneity and some personality in this. And I think that's really wonderful. So I'm just going to finish up these bottom few stems with this pretty green color. Now I'm thinking now as I'm, you know, painting these stems, I'm also thinking, and you know, I'll see what it looks like once I've painted the leaves, but I think I'm going to also take this dark blue green color and use it in the centers of the flowers, because I think that's going to give me a really nice contrast to the the warm tones and to the values that we have so far i might even darken it up a little bit i might even get a tube of gouache instead of working from this um this tin that i've been using because when you use gouache this way like when you have a pre-mixed tin like this every time that you add water to it and it dries back out again and then you add water and it dries out you start to lose some of the pigment you start to lose some of the opacity that you would normally find with gouache so i know that my blues and my greens that are in this palette have been used a little bit <laughs> and that i may not be able to get the nice value contrast that i'm really looking for for the centers of the flowers but I'm getting ahead of myself as usual, just, you know, kind of mentally planning ahead before I get there. But what I need to do right now is finish these last few stems and then we're going to start painting in the leaf shapes. Now I've switched to my number two round brush and I'm just painting these leaf shapes just by varying my pressure, just press, pressing down kind of hard through the fattest part of the leaf and then releasing the pressure so I get this nice pointed end. As I work on these, I'm gonna let them overlap. So I'm going to not just connect these to the individual stems, I'm gonna have a little bit of crossover as well so that you know the leaves of one plant will cross over the stems of another plant. I think in a few places I'm going to have leaves that cross over other leaves. Just again, trying to build up this really organic sort of feeling. Um, it's November here. It's getting a little bit chillier and I'm already missing my flower garden. <laughs> so I'm, I'm doing my best always and forever to bring flowers into my art practice because it just makes me happy and it's so lovely. And, you know, if you had asked me years ago, if I would, you know, be a flower gardener, I would have said no, no, because if I'm going to grow a garden, it's going to be vegetables. It's going to be things I can eat. <laughs> that was me for years. But in recent years, I've just slowly come to love flowers more and more. And I've slowly let our backyard be taken over by flowers. We have some raised beds and some container gardens in addition to having some flower beds around our house. And honestly, there's just nothing better than having a sweet little flower garden in the spring and the summer and the early fall. So you can just go out and wander around your flowers and 
Visit with the bees and butterflies. Oh, it's so lovely. I miss it. I'm pining for it, obviously. <laughs> so I'm just going to continue to draw adorable and beautiful flowers in my sketchbook to get me through the fall and winter months. Although, this may be surprising. Not if you know me, but if you're just watching me now. I actually don't like summer. <laughs> I am a hardcore autumn person. It is my favorite season. I wish I could have more of it. <laughs> um, so I love autumn. I love winter. Spring and summer are on the bottom of my season list, but I really love that I can grow things in the spring and the summer. It's just so satisfying to take a seed and turn it into something that is beautiful or something that you can eat. Ah, <sighs> it's wonderful. All right, enough about my flower garden and more about painting this little flower garden. So you can see now that since we're getting the contrast of this beautiful blue-green mix, it's really marrying in so well with the warm tones that we use for our flower petals. And you can see now that it's starting to look like something. It doesn't just look like some random sad flower blobs on a page, <laughs> which is kind of the vibe that we were, you know, going through for a hot minute. Now it's starting to look a little bit more sophisticated, <laughs> right? As sophisticated as some adorably cheerful flowers can look. But yeah, it's it's starting to just have a little bit of finesse now. It's starting to not look um, quite as naive as it did, but it's still very simple. It's still very delightful to paint. These are very simple shapes. They're so satisfying to paint. Painting these like wonderful squiggly leaves is just so fun. <laughs> it's such a fun way to fill up the space. And you'll notice as I'm going through here, I've been adding some little tiny leaves um, off to the sides of each individual flower too. So instead of only having leaves that attach to the stems, we're also just adding some little leaves to take up some space in between and um, you know fill it up and make it look a little less sad. I kind of flubbed this leaf up right here, but we're going to try to make it work. Um, there's no fixing it. <laughs> there's, there's no fixing this. So we're just going to try to make it work as best as we can. And then we'll, you know, hopefully as we get into the, you know, adding the centers of these flowers and adding a few more, um, you know, details here and there, hopefully it won't be so noticeable that that one leaf is kind of weird. <laughs> I'm actually just going in with my blue-green mix again and just going to add in some bases to the flower buds so they connect to the stems and are just floating in outer space, which would also be fine. If you don't want to add these bottom pieces and you just want them to be floating above your stems, then you should do that because it's your art and you're in charge of it. So I'm just going to add these onto all the little stems. It's just another little detail that's going to add some depth to the sketchbook piece and sort of connect everything together as we complete the rest of this. Now, i am decided I'm going to add some white to the centers of the flowers. So I have this little tube of titanium white Arta squash and, or this is Windsor Newton. Yeah, this is a Windsor Newton tube of designer gouache. Holbein calls theirs Arta squash and that's what is in the 10 over on the right hand side. And then Windsor Newton calls theirs designer gouache. It's all the same. It's water soluble. Um, so I'm actually just, I put it on a piece of paper here because my tin doesn't really have a clean spot and I don't want to pick up any color. So my plan here is to add a bunch of dots to the middle in white and then add some of the blue over top of it. So yeah, I'm just going to fill these in kind of just like blobby and uneven and kind of fun. And I'm keeping in mind that I'm going to add this dark blue green color in the center. So I'm making sure that the white part is pretty broad. It's it's because I want to make sure the white is still going to show once I add the darker center. So I probably need to go back here in a minute and hit up the first flower up here in the upper right hand corner. Probably need to hit that one up again and really thicken up those white um, colors. And of course, because I'm using a really thick layer of white here, I'm really blobbing it on. I'm going to have to wait a few minutes for this to dry <laughs> before I can start adding in my dark colors in the center. So after I finish painting these, I'm going to wait a few minutes and then come back to finish up 
the, the video. So yeah, let's go back in this corner and fill this in with just some more bold white. And then we'll be able to go in and add our darker color centers. I kind of like just the white, but I really think that adding the dark center is going to just really up the contrast and really just bring this design together. So this is, you know how like the center of like an anemone looks where it's kind of got the, you know, the dark center and then the white part of the flower. That's kind of the vibe we're going with here. So I've actually grabbed a tube of Holbein blue black gouache. This is again, artist gouache. And the reason that I picked this up is just like I said earlier, the paints that are already in this tin have been wet and dried so many times now that they don't really have the opacity that I want them to have for painting over white. Um, especially since we added these white centers, I really want to make sure that I have a nice opaque amount of color so the white isn't peeking through. Oh, and look how nice that looks when we start adding in the black. See how great that contrast looks compared to the white centers and sort of like the middle value tones of the pinks and the oranges and the reds and the yellows. This just provides that extra amount of contrast. Now, I'm painting pretty loosely still, just adding in some, you know, the centers are kind of like a blobby shape. <laughs> they're, they're not really, you know, a perfect circle or anything because we've just really been trying to keep this organic feel through this entire piece here. So that's it. We were done painting this cute little floral design in the sketchbook. It looks so cheerful and makes me so happy on this green November day. And I hope that you've enjoyed following along or listening along if you're not following along. And as always, I hope that watching these videos inspires you to start your own sketchbook practice if you haven't already. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe.